Now it's time to actually do this. I have put a black background behind the apparatus so that you can see it a little more clearly. Now I'm going to add some 6 molar hydrochloric acid, that's hydrogen chloride, to the thistle funnel. That's going to drop down into the marble and cause it to decompose, uh, make carbon dioxide, which will go through the drying tube and then into the receiving flask. Make sure, again, that this is not uh, tight. Because if it is tight, as the gas is formed here, that will force the hydrochloric acid out the thistle funnel, and that's bad. Hydrochloric acid is extremely corrosive and very dangerous to skin and eyes. So I need 10 milliliters, and the amount is not really critical. We just want to make more than enough to fill, more than enough carbon dioxide to fill the um, flask. And I'm drip, a little bit dripped down the side, so it's a good thing I'm wearing gloves. I need to catch that pretty quickly. So I carefully, and watching everything going on, I'll slowly add the hydrochloric acid to the thistle funnel. See how it reacts. And so we can see that it's starting to bubble. We can see that in the camera that's looking at the that's looking at the flask. It's beginning to react a little bit. So I can add some more. And all that's starting to react pretty well, bubbling pretty good. Make sure this is tight. We don't want to be losing any of our carbon dioxide that we're producing. And notice that the bottom of the thistle funnel is under the level of the liquid. That way we know that the gas that's produced is mostly going to be coming out the proper angled tube and not coming out the thistle funnel. Now as this creates gas, we're going to be filling gas here, and we'll check that we don't have any pushback, that we don't have any liquid rising up the thistle funnel. Because if that happens, that means that there's some back pressure in here, uh, and we don't want, and again, we don't want that. I'm going to go uh, rinse this off, uh, because it had some hydrochloric acid off the side, and we're going to leave this reacting for 15 minutes. If it's slowing down and doesn't do anything, or if it stops bubbling within those 15 minutes, then we'll add some more acid. Okay, so now it's been about nine and a half minutes, and it doesn't look like it's doing much. So let's give this a shake, see if that helps it to mix any. And frankly, that doesn't seem to be doing much. Um, so I'm going to add another 10 milliliters of, of the 6 molar hydrochloric acid. Thank you. 
And that's even worse. I got a little drip down the side there. So we're trying to avoid that. So carefully add the acid. We should get a lot of bubbling because there's still lots of marble there. Yep, look at that go. Coming pretty nicely. Yeah, it's fizzing very well. Okay, it's been 15 and a half minutes, so we can go ahead and do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out the wire, disconnect the tube, release the clamp, backstop's going to fall over. And take this out. Set it down by the balance. Okay. Zero the balance. And weigh it. And that's reading 128.08. So I'll record that. So this is a mask of flask assembly containing CO2. 128.08. Grams. Now I'm not sure exactly how I managed to miss getting video of taking these measurements, but according to the National Weather Service at the time that I did this experiment, the air pressure was 1021.0 hectopascals, and the air temperature which I measured, actually I measured the temperature inside the flask, was 21.0 degrees Celsius. So the next part is to determine the volume of the receiving flask. What we're going to do is find the volume of the flask up to the stopper. So I grab a china marker, otherwise known as a grease pencil, and I'm going to mark the level you know, where the stopper comes. Then I'll fill it up with water and pour the water out into a graduated cylinder to measure the volume of the water. So now for our last measurements, which is the volume of the liquid that's in the receiving flask. So I need to pour it into the 200 milliliter, or the 100 milliliter uh, graduated cylinder. And I have to do that several times because this is a 250 milliliter receiving flask. Um, I have to, so I'm going to have to pour it in several times, but in the meantime, uh, when I fill it up, I'm going to have to fill it up to exactly 100, dump it out, fill it up to exactly 100, dump it out, and then finally when I have a fraction, then I can uh, actually read it. A little bit over 100, so I have to back off a little bit. Okay, that looks like I'm right on the line. So 100, dump that out. That looks like I came right on the line. So 200. That's too much. So there's over 300. And the last bit 
isn't going to be uh, measurable in this 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. So I'm going to grab a smaller graduated cylinder to measure the last bit. And the last bit comes out at 2.59 milliliters. So, strictly, so according to our measurements, we've come up with 302.59. However, at the very best, by our significant figures rules, at the very best, we have one tenth of a milliliter accuracy from this graduated cylinder. Even though we can do one hundredth of a milliliter with this graduated cylinder, if we add them together, if we have a sum, we can only keep the accuracy for the least accurate one. So we can only have one digit past the decimal point for milliliters, so the tenth of a milliliter accuracy. So the 302.59 becomes realistically 302.6. Even that is overly optimistic for our, ex, for our uh, accuracy because, as we see, there is still some liquid, there is still some water in the receiving flask, there is still some water inside the graduated cylinders. So our estimate of volume is probably a little bit low. So we can say 302.6, but that's a lower, a lower limit. There's probably a little bit more. But our most realistic estimate, I should say, is 302.6 milliliters of CO2 in the receiving flask. And that's all the measurements that we do for this lab.